The question today is, has Lebanon been turned into one big Iranian arms factory? And if it has, what are the implications? Well, Lebanon goes to the polls on May the 6th. Nine long years have passed since the last parliamentary elections, which, according to the Constitution, are supposed to be held every four years. Ever since 2014, which is when the last poll should have been held, ministers and politicians have voted again and again to postpone elections and extend the current parliament, citing security concerns, political crises and a dispute over the election law. When the new poll is held, the political landscape within Lebanon and in the region generally will have changed dramatically. The intervening period has seen both the rise and the battlefield defeat of Islamic State in neighbouring Iraq and Syria, a, a dramatic extension of Iranian power in both those countries, and a huge build-up of sophisticated Iranian weaponry in Lebanon itself, together with the development of arms manufacturing facilities on a massive scale. Moreover, the previous pro-Western Iranian-backed political alliance led by Prime Minister Saad Hariri, has disintegrated. Over the nine years from 2009, Hariri's government has included members of the increasingly confident Iran-backed Shiite movement Hezbollah, one obvious sign of Iran extending its uh, power base into Lebanon by way of its subsidiary. Hariri could never be reconciled to the increasingly dominant position that Hezbollah was assuming within the Lebanese body politic. Regardless of his political objections, his personal reasons are overwhelming. Uh, for on uh, February the 14th, 2005, his father, Rafik Hariri, one-time Prime Minister and a powerful opponent of Syrian and Hezbollah dominance in Lebanon, was assassinated, blown up in a motorcade. The subsequent judicial proceedings, which are still ongoing after 12 years, have pretty well established that the murder was ordered by Bashar al-Assad, Syria's president, and carried out by Hezbollah operatives. So Sa'ad Hariri has business left unfinished by his father to complete. And there's no doubt that Rafiq would have been appalled by the extent to which Iran has gained control over Lebanon's military power and is using the country as a manufacturing base from which to arm the Shiite crescent that it is consolidating. For Iran is building and equipping a Shiite empire extending from Yemen through Bahrain Iran, Iraq, Syria, and through to Lebanon. Now, back on March the 14th, uh, 2017, the Kuwaiti daily Al Jarida reported that Iran had established facilities for manufacturing missiles and other weapons in Lebanon and had recently handed them over to the management and oversight of Hezbollah. The facilities were more than 50 metres underground and heavily shielded against aerial attacks. This report was confirmed in some detail in July 2017 by France's Intelligence Online. It referred to at least two underground facilities being constructed in Lebanon for manufacturing missiles and other weaponry, providing details of the weaponry produced and the approximate locations of the plants. These developments highlight the depth of Iran's involvement in Syria and Lebanon, something that both Israel and some Arab states, including Saudi Arabia, have been warning against recently. In particular was the article published on January the 28th, 2018, just a few weeks ago, by Israel Defense Forces spokesman Ronan Manelis, an article reproduced on several Lebanese websites, including Ahewar, in other Arabic publications, and on media outlets including The Voice of Beirut, the Moscow-based Sputnik Media Group, 
and Israel Radio's Arabic station. Uh, I quote from Manelis's article, Through the actions and inaction of the Lebanese authorities, he wrote, uh, Lebanon is turning into one big missile factory, while much of the international community looks the other way. It's no longer about transfers of arms, money or advice. De facto, Iran has opened a new branch, the Lebanon branch." Unquote. 2018, said Manalis, will determine Lebanon's future, a stable and economically prosperous country or an arm of Iran and Hezbollah. Then Manelis turned to the forthcoming elections. Will Hezbollah, he wondered, uh, manage to elbow out the Sunni camp and officially turn the country into an Iranian client state? Well, responsible opinion would deplore such an outcome. The possible countermeasures range from military action by one or other outside agency, uh, action in Lebanon or action in Iran to prevent any such outcome, uh, diplomatic pressure on the Lebanese government to exert effective control over the overweening power of Hezbollah, or, and this is to be preferred, a major internal political effort by Hariri and his allies in the new election campaign aimed at wresting power back into responsible hands. Well, thank you for listening, and do please join me again next time. Goodbye.